Hey guys, Movie Junkie for Life here again, and this is going to be my review of Pirates of the Caribbean's Dead Men Tell No Tales, otherwise known as Pirates of the Caribbean Part 5. And in this one, uh, Jack and his crew are searching for the trident of Poseidon, because this thing can break any curse, anytime, anywhere. So we have everybody returning. We have a couple new faces here and there, but it's basically the cast, you know. And um, this franchise for me, when Pirates first came out, it was something that, not that it hadn't been done before, but it hadn't been done on that scale. And it was something at the time that felt fresh and new. It was absolutely perfect. Pirates of the Caribbean Part 1 is one of my all-time favorite adventure films because that sense of awe and wonder and epic adventure, it's all over that movie. That movie was so on point that, I, I don't know, I don't know, it just, it just felt perfect. It had every ingredient you needed. But as it's the franchise went forward, these movies got a little bit weaker each time. Um, Pirates Part 1 and Part 2, I, I loved Part 1, I really liked Part 2, I kind of liked Part 3, you see where I'm going with this. So, Pirates of Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales was not really a movie I was looking forward to. And to be quite honest, I kind of begrudgingly went to see it so that I could review it, give my thoughts on it. It is part of this big blockbuster summer movies coming out, but it just wasn't one that I was looking forward to. So let's see if there was anything in it to enjoy. First of all, visually, this movie looks really, really good. These pirate movies have always looked really good, especially the first three. They each have a kind of unique feel to them, even though they're all being directed by the same guy, Gore Verbinski. Um, this one uh, it has a new director, who, sorry, the name I can't remember right now, but it does feel fresh. It feel, It's a lot more enjoyable and visually appealing than the last one I saw, part four. Part four, for me, is like a distant memory. This one, it, it, it held your attention. The action sequences, they were, again, huge and over the top, and they were played more for comedic effect. But that's okay that didn't really bother me that much especially the first one caught me kind of off guard but at, at the same time all the action sequences the look the uh, the locations everything was on point everything felt priority and i enjoyed that aspect of it uh jack sparrow this is a character based on now johnny depp hasn't been putting out a lot of great work recently you know i'm kind of burnt out on him sad to say i never thought i would hear myself say that but his character of Jack Sparrow is, to me, that's his ultimate character. That is even better than his Edward Scissorhands and all the stuff that came before, you know. And here is no exception. Now, he's very much his over-the-top self here, you know, but I didn't really have an issue with that. I enjoyed seeing Jack again. And here we get some backstory on why Jack is the way he is, you know. They use that CGI thing where they make you look younger. I, I honestly think the only people who've been able to pull that off successfully are the, is the MCU U universe. I, I don't think anybody else has done it well. I just watched Ant-Man again last night. I was blown away by Michael Douglas de-aging. You know, they did it with Kurt Russell recently in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So they did it here. It's okay, it's fine. It's just, you know, it's still kind of creepy. You know, it just doesn't look 100% natural, but that's okay. Um, Javier Bardem also stood out to me as Captain Salazar, uh, who has a personal grudge against Jack. I won't go into why. And he is uber creepy here. He's very good at playing a bad guy. And that's no exception here. So I enjoyed him as well. And everybody kind of had a reason for why they were going after this trident. They, they showed everybody uh, had a, I should say, like a plot line. And it kind of helped give a conclusion to everything we'd seen before you know it, it helped a lot in wrapping up some questions that maybe fans had about certain characters like Jeffrey Rush's character so all of that was good and I enjoyed that um, the cons now my my biggest issue was the pacing of this film this movie is about two hours plus long it's not really that long I think actually it's the shortest in all of the films so far but it felt like it was dragging at times. It felt, 
tedious at times and you shouldn't be watching a movie like this and ever feel like that you know the, the last half the third act of this movie is really good it picks up it gets energetic it ends really well the ending is a lot of fun but before that there's stuff in this movie that repeats jokes that fall flat and honestly uh, for me it felt tedious and I really should not be wondering how much longer a movie is while I'm watching it that's never a good sign another issue for me and this might be a personal issue is uh, I think his name is Brenton Thwaites or Thwaites who plays Henry Turner now his character has a reason for being on ship like everybody else and that's fine but this particular actor this is all on me I this is, has nothing to do with the guy he just always feels very generic to me in Gods of Egypt I felt like he was one of the worst aspects of a bad film granted that movie for me is like a, a cheesy fun watch at this point but his character in that and his character here I just can't separate them you know I guess I don't know if it's the actor's fault it's just my personal taste he's just too generic for my liking and I really don't care when he's on screen you know so that's just my personal thing I am an idiot whatever um, overall guys this Pirates movie it is better than the fourth one it's um, it's it's not a bad film at all it, it is enjoyable it's entertaining but it doesn't have that sense of adventure that the first one had you know when you could go and you could get yourself completely lost in a film you can feel like a kid again when you're watching it especially those types of movies that you know bring out your fantastical adventurous side that's when you know it's working unfortunately for me this movie doesn't do that it has all the ingredients but that sense of thrill is never really there I honestly never felt like anything bad was gonna happen to any of these characters at any time so overall guys I'm gonna give Pirates of the Caribbean 5 a 6 out of 10 like I said it's not a bad film it's an okay movie you know it, it's an enjoyable movie and if you're a fan of the franchise obviously go check it out um, it does answer a lot of questions from previous films but overall guys I just didn't think it had that oomph of part one and even part two so it's it's an okay film and it's in cinemas now so go check it out and see what you think maybe you love you would love it you know maybe pirate films are everything for you and you would find no fault with it I'm personally giving it a six out of ten so that's gonna be it for me guys until next time our <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> okay, bye.